Hello, everybody, and welcome to La Colina International Raceway here for the Grand Prix of Sp or for the Spanish Grand Prix. And alongside of me, I have DJ Curtis and Vince Freeze here to broadcast. And I think the biggest news item is is that they are in rolling start formation right now because we have just had a rainstorm come through and the track is still wet. But the race should be dry. It looks like. Yeah, it's going to play a, uh, definitely a role, though, because we do have some guys who, you know, are they set up for the wet? Are they set up for the dry? When we talked about this. We saw us in qualifying, guys running off in that first S-complex. That looks like tre treacher, treacherous uh, conditions with the wet, too. Could be a, could be a runoff here. Let's see. And really, with the conditions, with us having a rolling start, you know, Pirelli has those intermediate and wet tires, and the matter at hand is when these drivers are going to pit, because once the track conditions really get to them, and when the track starts to dry up, they want to pit as early as they can so they can get those tires to really get the grip and the traction so that they can clock in some really quick lap times, because the difference between the dry tires, you know, let's say like a medium soft hard compound versus an intermediate and wet are so huge, and they want to get that as soon as they can. And we do not actually have time for a starting grid video because they are actually going to start rolling off here. So we will be back in one second. All right, so while they are rolling off, we are going to try and do a starting grid with Jack Marriott and Sam and Ozkin on the front row. What do you guys think of those two? Uh, not very surprising to see them up there. Very quick teams as usual. I'd say it's pretty formulaic to see the top teams run up there and qualify well. You got Max Anderson and Casey Nanico on the next two rows, or the next row there. Behind them, you have Vince Freeze and the first of the Mercedes cars with Kitsune Hashimoto. And next on the grid, you've got uh, DJ Curtis and Kenny Myatt. Myatt's the one big surprise in the top ten. You also have Zachary Fitzwater and Luca Salameo. Salameo in ninth, Fitzwater in tenth. That was not a good starting position for Salameo there, our New Zealand pole sitter. First car knocked out in qualifying was Grayson Ace Vito, along with Darren Blake in 12th. Jesse Turner and Joaquin Kasperson are in 13th and 14th. So far, has there been anybody that's really surprised you so far as we're with Byrne and Ard right now? Uh, I'm going to say other than my... Uh, you know, I'm going to give props to Sean Ard. You know, top top 15 running that baton. They looked like they were solid Q1 contenders. I expect them to do some big things in this race, especially with the drying track. Watch for those guys. Ormond and Bouchard are the next two cars in a row. And of course, Haas is second in points right now, but in constructor standings. You also have Adventure back there as well, the last car to make it through, or one of the late, later cars to make it through, and Servino Rosselli on his inside for turn one there. Rosselli, of course, is second in points, is starting way down the order. Then you've got the first cars knocked out was Jack Halleck. Also, got to give props to Alex Tanker for qualifying in a position that a lot of people didn't expect. As oh, we got a little slowdown here. It looks like we it's might. Force Indy, that's might be a bit out of line there. They're going to get themselves back formulating. Then you've got Mikola and Otz as well back there. But like I said, give Jack. props to uh, Alex Tanker for getting that high up the grid in the arrows. Uh, Julius Anderson and Behringer are on the grid there. Then you've got Willington and Roush. On the grid, and then the last row, you've got Tolfe and Stark. Tolfe, of course, starting last. So who's the? So who are your picks for this race? Now that we've got a rolling start for it, I'm gonna go. I know last week we were high on McLaren. Uh, we were also high on Ferrari. I think it's time for Mercedes to get back its turf. I, I expect Hashimoto and Salmeo to have good starts. I'm gonna go with Hashimoto in an upset here. I think Mercedes is right now the underdog. They're hungry for something. I expect them to pull a rabbit out of the hat and get a win here today. DJ, what are your predictions for it? I would say the Red Bulls. I said this last time, and they didn't do well, but I have a good feeling that if they can get a good start, Sam and Oscan actually could be the one to actually steal this away. And Red Bulls usually known for their creative strategies, and if they can pull something off here today, despite it being very much a high-speed track, they could really get it into their own hands. I was going to actually go with Red Bull, but since you took my position here, I'm going to go back and look at Vince Freeze. Or maybe DJ Curtis to come through the field. Maybe DJ Curtis can win his second race of the season here as they kind of funnel down the backside of the course here. Um, any surprises outside of the top ten that might get points today? I, we got to look at Renault, uh, Kenny. This this is the team everyone's got their eyes on. Leading the constructors. We know Rosselli and Turner down there in 19th and I believe 17th or 14th, excuse me. I expect Renault, they got to pull some crazy strategy. And Jack Hallett, right? Jack Hallett's been a stud these first couple weeks. 
I mean, if he doesn't get any points, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, House always kind of find a way, and he finds a niche to get up to the top ten when we least expect it. And keep in mind, he is starting all the way back in twentieth or twenty first position. So there you go, round not a great turn. start. So this off. is a different experience for these drivers. They don't get to do rolling starts that often. But here they come, down to the green, and away they go. Great start there by Ozkin on the outside there. Not used to this kind of start there. And here we go, down into one. It was quite formulaic through there. But, oh, Ozkin really slows up there. And you've got oh. the two McLarens off the road. Nanako goes to the lead of the race. And it really looks like... Really the needle in that first few corners there. Great effort by Nanako. And that was a good... That was a bad start by Marriott from pole to fourth. So far, has everybody made it through? Yes, they have. Down the track they go. It was pretty lucky that they got to spread out as much as they did, as Hashimoto also was probably the biggest gainer on the start from 5th to 3rd. There, also DJ Curtis up to up to 5th from 7th. But now you got Salomeo going through, trying to go on the outside now. Oh, we got a car. Somebody went off the track, I think, a little oh, bit there. Back there. Somebody kicked up some dirt. Earlier. Ooh, a little bit of contact there before the Ooh, two Salbers. There's the bad There's times. The together. And bad start by Fitzwater there, too. Lost a spot to Ace Vito. Freeze went a little bit wide there. That's going to allow the Jordan to close in while the Red Bulls attacking the Ferrari right behind them, or early in front of them. Been a clean start so far, though, for the most part. So the how long do you think it's going to take for them to dry up this track? Uh, the way it's looking, I'm thinking at most five laps. It's just looking like uh, we got a battle, a big battle here with the two Mercedes. How did Kenny Myatt make a move on Ace Vito, or how did Ace Vito or Myatt hold off Ace Vito there going around a corner like that through that S Bend complex? As here comes Fitzwater now, trying to look to get by Ace Vito here. Ace Vito a little bit wider. Here's Fitzwater on the outside. On the outside. That's the last the corner there. First the lap was led that. by driver Casey Nanico here, but here comes Ozkin back. Much better run there for Ozkin through the corner. Down the track they go. This is such a fast track, isn't it? Really is. Just so many different corners, but not much in terms of letting off the gas or using the brakes as much as we've seen in these previous rounds. And you see the, the Minardi going a little bit wide right behind us there. That might have been, I believe that's Stark back there, but yeah, really these drivers, Stark. it's all about high-speed corners really for these drivers. And well, right now with the uh, McLaren up front, it's not really surprising to see the McLarens prosper so well at these kind of tracks. And as DJ said in qualifying, Jim, right? find your rhythm. This is the one circuit where that last run corner stretch, you got to get a good run off that last corner to get the turn one S's. And if you don't get the rhythm here, you're going to pay the price in the sector for sure. Also, not a great start for both the Renaults here. Jesse Turner qualified in front of Rosselli and is all the way down to 19th. So he must have had a really bad start there. He was, I think, starting 13th or 14th there. See here, going up to the ring. This is a here, good move, move by Ace Vito Ooh. here, but Maya throws a very, very late block there. Going to go Once on board with block more of a defense there, just holding that inside line really well there, and he's just Ace Vito right on the bumper and oh. decides to go to the inside, really Ooh. tight corner there, nice. and just not the best area to really do an overtake there. Is this track that easy to pass on, considering how fast it is? Your best opportunity, I'm looking, Kenny, it could be that last corner by surprise, but I'm thinking that turn one complex, right? You got it somehow. Here we go. Let's see if he pulls it off here on this uh, wide shell. We got somebody going underneath. That's one of the Saubers there. Casperson. Casperson trying to go upgrade, on yeah. Fitzwater there. A little further up the field here, Anderson got a really poor start from second on the grid. Actually, he must have gone off somewhere. A good pace, he though. must have gone off. Let's take a look and see what happened with Anderson here because he – uh, went off somewhere. He dropped from second to or from fourth to seventh on that start, and I'm Anderson. not sure where he did that from. But it was. I think a, he just had a bad start. Really, that might have been the only reason. Probably got shoved off. He in that was first fourth, goal. and it was actually he lost it all in the uh, second lap there. But there goes. He actually is holding off DJ Curtis with ease, or actually got by DJ Curtis there, and DJ Curtis has dropped to seventh here. As Freeze is going to try and set him up here. Eighth, we got a battle in the back with the Sauber and 
Benetton there. The Benetton's going to the outside here. Great move by Ormond around the outside there. Forces Casperson to back off the throttle. And we got the two Saubers Ooh. nearly making contact. Ooh, and Casperson. Look at Renault though coming in. Renault's coming in. Right behind. It's with Selly. Is this a Underneath. this is a very momentum based track I've learned as you lose momentum you can lose a ton of spots around here. Well, right now, Kenny, this is looking like what you said in the beginning. It's looking like an orderly, ideal racer. We're not seeing the mix up. It looks like the safety car third is very low. Looks like the top teams are we got might have a battle for the lead though coming real soon. Here comes Oskin on the back. Nanico. Down the draft here, so get a little draft. Yep, really right, good sector left. there. Very, very get, close gotta, on the rear bumper here. You, you got to get a good run off of here in this final section. Got to punch it right now. And that's actually kind of go, probably go Nanico there. Not a great final hairpin there for Oskin. Now in the turn one, let's see who overcooks it. Nanico looks pretty orderly. Here comes Oskin down. Nanico into the first sec. Let's see. You see how closer to the um line, the curb, that Oskin was coming into the left-hander. A little wide was. by Curtis, a little wide by Free. Yep. Ooh, one of the Haas's was Haas is really Ooh. close to that run. That was a really good squeezy right over there. With, uh, it looks like Bouchard and Turner for a brief moment. Top two and Constructors battling right now. It's an interesting mix going on back in the midfield. Here comes Oskin again. Look at that draft. And we are back here quick after a little bit of a camera technical difficulty there as Nanako still leads over Sam at Oskin here. As here they go, there's Hashimoto in third. We've got actually a good battle here between Marriott and Salomeo for fourth. And Anderson is now sixth pretty solidly there. The field has spread out quite a bit in this race. So is there, um, so how much do you think pit strategy is going to be a factor now in this race? There, I, I think, uh, <laughs> I think it's going to be all pit strategy tonight. I really think, uh, I don't know. I just feel like with with this, we we said in the beginning, it was going to be an ordeal race. I think DJ's right. I think Red Bull has the upper hand as of right now. We know Red Bull has creative strategies. I, I expect these guys with tire degradation. Tire degradation is interesting, right? The first two weeks we talked about high tire day. Here it's really a momentum track. So I don't know so much about the tires. It might be just more who gets the undercut overcut. That's been playing out the past two weeks. We've seen guys go on the undercut work, and we've seen some guys in the overcut play it well. And time the safety car. So there's a lot of elements in this week for sure. I think we also have to consider the weather conditions for two to point out because if, it's always up to driver interpretation because at the track and also up to the team as well because if the track really starts to dry up and they knows the weather trends or even if the driver kind of knows it, they will try and report their team as much as they can. Communication is so fundamental in this sport. And if you want to get some good track position and good strategy, and with the weather really being that additional variable, that's just really something they need to really pick up on so they could really prosper and be uh, really just taken advantage of. As of right now, the biggest loser so far in this race has been Pat Mikola. I believe he started 23rd or something like that. Now he's down to 28th. Not a great start for Mikola there as Roush is now fighting with... Um, Barringer there. Roush has had a good start to this race in the Minardi. Will this be a third race in a row for Minardi getting points? If it is the third race in a row and Ivan Stark gets it, he's going to be considered a call-up driver and he might get to a better team, but we'll see. Well, I don't think it'd be it Stark. Out. Stark is way down the order there in 29th, quite a ways down the order. We had a battle going wrapped. on here. And Two Haases and the Rosselli or turn looks like. Very close battling back here with the Haases and Rosselli. Um, where is Turner, ironically, in all of this? I think Turner... No, Rosselli's further up the grid. Yeah, I forgot Turner has fallen down the order, and Rosselli's gone through the order like a rocket. So... Renault's still showing some pace in that midfield. But are they back in the where they're supposed to be is now the question. We'll see. Renault wasn't exactly the happiest with this track. Oh, and actually... Turner's Turner making a move. And actually, when we go to the Circuit Thierry Sicote, which is their home race in France, it's actually kind of surprising because I would have thought that they would have a car that would be based pretty well around there, but apparently not, as Turner is busy trying to hold off as much as he... Oh, Turner laid on the brakes there, going underneath. Ooh. The, the Haas, Haas there, but... A little bit there, just couldn't get that exit speed. Yeah, that no, we couldn't there. Causing problems out there. Oh, somebody under the bed, Tom. Huh? Yeah. That's Arden Halleck there. This is an aggressive place to make a Who's move here. Down first. 
It looks like, oh, Ooh. oh, Halleck, oh, but Halleck somehow keeps on to it here, down yeah, underneath the underpass. Look at the other Haas, though. Look at the other Haas. That would be Daniel right, Bouchard. Daniel, moment, momentum is key around here. I think Ard, you know, even though he, he stayed online, Halleck just stayed on the gas, and that's what prevailed. You know, if you've ever oh. seen a stock car I'm race here, you ever seen a stock car race? This is kind of like super oh. speedway racing, isn't it, with how close everybody is around here? Hard right, underneath. Here comes Turner. And no. look at the Jaguar back there. Over. Jaguar's reeled in the Jordan right behind him. Frodemar that would be Frodemar Ots because, as you know, Willie, or um, I'm sorry, Mikolai. the other, Mikolai is way Mikolai. down the order. There is, here we go. Around this track here, we're going to go up a little further up the grid here. We got another little pack here with Zachary Fitzwater holding up Ormond, who has rocketed through the field. Darren Blake and Servino Rosselli, who is probably the biggest gainer of the day so far, has been Rosselli, possibly going for another points paying run here as DJ Curtis leads another pack led by Freeze, leading Freeze, Myatt, and Ace Vito is trying to hold on there. A little further up the grid, you also have Hashimoto, Marriott, Salomeo, and Anderson there. And then further up, you've got Ozkin versus top, Nanako. Dude. So I'm a little bit more concerned about this group right here as you keep going through this field here. No cars out of the race yet in this Spanish Grand Prix. We're going to take a commercial break here, and we'll be back after these messages. Welcome back to the uh, Spanish Grand Prix here at La Colina. We're going to kind of see some of these cars go flying by here. Uh, lead pat leading to our kind of getting close to each other here as uh, we just see some of the cars going by so so far in this race what have you noticed with the leading group so far of Ozkin and Ma and uh, Nanako right now even pace I, I I think Red Bull's a little bit better in the corners but that McLaren especially on that way I told I talked about the last exit that last run into the first s's uh, she's beating Nanako. She she's beating Oscar just barely in the straights. It's it's going to be close. I think this is going to come down to strategy. Like I said, I, I'm going to give Red Bull the upper hand in strategy, but uh, we see some midfield battles. We also see the Mercedes uh, v other Red Bull too. That battle's going in place as well. Yeah, this is Salomeo and um, Marriott here battling with Anderson, and they have been reeling in Hashimoto a little bit. Kitsune Hashimoto. There comes Marriott through the grid right now. And Marriott has tried to pick up some speed here. We're going to go on board with him here. We go on board here in the grandstand section. As you, this track is just so fast, isn't it? That it's kind of actually hard to make a pass on, isn't it? Unless if you got really momentum. Good corner there, kind of saw the the car in front of him slip just a little bit there, but I think Hashimoto's kind of holding up that train of cars, I would say. But it's it's a good thing you know it's one thing to really catch a car but it's another to pass Ooh, it. nice on the brakes there, could there the be brakes. a team order there between mercedes to let uh salomeo go by hashimoto then I, oh here's well hold on so we have a run here from i don't think it says this area. time it's not Let's see if they go wide here Turn if, nice nice and tight if hashimoto is holding up salomeo here will there be a team order then Hard to say right now. We don't know when the pit stop cycle is going to start. I think it's still too early for right now in the game. But like I said, Mercedes does have interesting calls on the top of the pit box. So we'll see what they do. And we got a really close battle here with Anderson closing. And we're going to go on board with Anderson here trying to maybe get by the McLaren Mercedes of Went a little bit wide Marriott there. there. The front grip of the Red Bulls is incredible. Just to look at the way they're maneuver, their maneuverability in the chassis. It's definitely better so far than, let's say, a Ferrari. It, it, it's, uh, and even, let's say, a Mercedes in the past couple of races with Austin up there. So, we get here through the uh, dips. And just look at the way that the speed and just how consistent it has to be through some of these S's. Oh, we had a car go off, actually, in that hairpin complex there. We're going to take a look, actually, to see what happened. Oh, that was Behringer and India. Roush went off. Marty. Did they crash? They must have. There. It was only a sector yellow, I believe. Okay, we'll go. Oh. Maybe that, that Maybe that wasn't a sector yeah. yellow. Maybe that wasn't a sector oh. yellow. This wasn't a sector yellow at all. Oh, yeah. That was a full Horrifying course right. yellow there. And that is Behringer Tanker. The arrows and that is going to be a safety car there. We didn't expect one today, but there is a safety car. That just happened, actually. So... 
Safety car uh -huh. is out on lap 11 of 35, and this is actually going to load the field up a little bit more there. Kenny, this is gonna this is gonna bring the Mercedes back to the fold. It's gonna release the Oscan lead and uh, Nanako lead. This is Everybody gonna be great. Everybody's together, basically. Yeah. Again. Um, we are looking at this again here, and that was a oh. big hit by Modeste Berenger there, the French driver. Oh, wreck too. Oh, look at that impact. Yeah. And that's one of the negatives of this track is how fast it is of a track. Just that's super speedway type wreck there. You yeah. might have a better angle. Ooh. Just terrible wreck there. Oh, big God. wreck there for... Ooh, and, uh, they got hit by the arrows at the end of it, too, just to add to insult. Yeah, that that could have been a lot worse for the arrows driver. We're going to go on board with Tanker here. You might uh, he see has one of the helmets, Cam, actually. We're going to go Watch maybe with slow-mo in a sec here. Actually, we're going to go here. Oh, Ooh, that could have right been so fire. much worse. These cars do yes. not have helmet protection or head protection or devices, and that could have been very bad there. Uh, we have no word on Behringer's Yeah, we have no word condition. on Behringer's medical condition here, but that was a scary, scary incident there. We're going on board with Scott Roush, another car that's going to get knocked out from that incident. I think he oh, the, oh. They kind of bounced off the Toyota. I think the Force India bounced off the Toyota, and then Roush was just kind of right there, just wrong right. place at the wrong time, just... Just That's an unfortunate a racing accident. Rack. And Modest Behringer. If we don't lose the camera here. Well, no, we're not going to go on board with Behringer here, but we're going to take a look at the oh, slow mo God. camera. The slow mo. How fast was that into the wall? Just water? right that there. Was that was 100 and something miles an hour there. I didn't really see what the top speed was there, but Behringer just goes Almost salty. cartwheeling. Rear fur, yeah. And how, how did that Jaguar yeah. miss the incident there, too? Ots or Mikola? That would be Ots, I'm guessing. No, it's Mikola, Mikola. actually. Gotta go on board with Mikola. That was yeah, a that was a voice. very, very close avoidance here. Very scary incident here around this track. It's a massive shunning. Oh! Ooh, what a, what a one avoidance. One avoidance. One avoidance, yeah. That was... Yeah, that was a very impressive avoidance there. We're gonna take one more look at the incident from the other camera angle here on Behringer's car here. This is... And I want to pay attention to the speed that Behringer, that Modest Behringer gets into the wall here. And a little bit of contact there. That's with Daniel Adventure. Roush. It is 164 oh. miles an hour oh, into that wall God. there. That is a very first, yeah. scary incident there for Modest Behringer. Ooh. Luckily, I don't... That could have been so bad for Tanker and for Mikola there. Luckily, Behringer... Um, Behringer would be... Is probably going to be taken to a medical center. So, that was a very... There's a lot of uh, medical staff on site there. So, uh, we'll be back after uh, these commercial messages. So, we have three cars that won't be returning to this race. That would be Alex Tanker, Modest Behringer, and Scott Roush. Behringer is being transported to a local medical center. We do hope he will be all right. The order right now, and we'll go back green after a safety car, will be Casey Nanako leading the race with Sam and Oskin, Kitsune Hashimoto, Lucas Salameo, Jack Marriott. Um, that would be Max Anderson. DJ Curtis, Vince Freeze, Grayson Ace Vito. Ace Vito got by Myatt there at that last bit there. Nathan Ormond, Darren Blake, Servino, excuse me, Rosselli. Ooh, excuse me. Joachim Casperson, Fitzwater down in 15th. He, of course, had just pitted at that time, so Fitzwater really lost a bit of time there. Ard, Halleck, Turner, Byrne, Bouchard, Otts, Willington, Adventure, Anderson, Mikola barely missing that wreck. Stark and Tolfe will all be the 27 cars that will restart in this race. So we'll see you when we get back. All right. We're going to have 20 to go when we go back green. They've called the safety car back in. Of course, Behringer is being taken to a local hospital. If we get any updates, we will be sure to give them to you. Um, I don't think we will get them in this race, though. Uh, hopefully, he will be all right. There was a lot of concern about Modest Behringer down there. So, it is going to be Nanako there. Oh, looks like we got a car blowing up in the back. 
Oh, no, 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 that's not good. Somebody's got a problem back there. I think, is it one of the run? No, it's not Turner. I think they're just getting lined up a little bit, maybe. Yeah, it's a really ragged start here. Of course, driver who tried to do an undercut got it. Looks like Fitzwater. Fitzwater. Fitzwater was a driver that uh, was trying to do an undercut here and wasn't able to get it done. So we've got a sure really messy right qual. Something is wrong with Fitzwater's car, I believe. I think that could be suspension. I just don't see it's an engine. There's got to be some sort of suspension damage. And he is holding up the Renault of... And the game crashed. All right. So now, it seems like they're starting to line up. Oh, three wide. That's three wide. not right. There's definitely a mess up here with a car here. Boring, Somebody... Maybe. Sean Art is out of line. Fitzwater is... I'm not sure. And we've got a Sauber trying to go three wide down there. Uh, we're still three wide here, so this guy gets sold oh, up. No, but it looks like they are getting into line there. there there's definitely something wrong with the Fitzwater car. If oh, I'm no, Fitzwater. it actually looks like maybe the Sauber's be... trying to pit, maybe. Oh, now we're three wide. Oh, oh, little uh, contact oh. there, a little bit of beat and banging under yellow here. I don't think they're going to be too happy with each other after this uh, one. Darren okay. Blake, I don't know what is going on back here, but if they go to green flag three wide, there is definitely going to be some type of penalty awarded to them. Is this the... No, we're coming toward the last corner here. They gotta get this sort of that. I think we keep we keep jumping to conclusions on some of these cars. We'll have to see once oh. they pull, one of these cars pull down pit lane, really. Where we can fully get a full uh, diagnosis. Could this be a communication thing? Where one car is trying to communicate to the other that he needs to get into the pits. Here we go. And it looks yeah, like think, it think... is Casperson's trying to come in. Something is wrong with the Casperson car, but we are at the front of the field with Nanako. Green flag is out. Here we go. Hopefully we don't get another incident like we just had a little bit ago there. Right We've already got three wide. wide. Down, Three wide in the back. We can get through. Oh, we've got Nanako going off. Hashimoto's Almost. going for second now. Or going for the lead now. Hashimoto does get second. Three we got three wide. wide. Red Bull almost went off there. That's really going to cost him. No, it doesn't. Third place. He holds it. Just what Can't utter confidence. Look at the Ferraris, though. Acevedo's really trying to attack his teammate. Something happened to Freeze. Did everybody get through? No, they didn't. Blake, oh, no. Rosselli, and Fitzwater. We did have an incident with Fitzwater and Rosselli on the start there. Oh, that's and that's oh. going to be maybe another safety car right there. Oh, yes, it is. Fitzwater and, Ros Fitzwater and Rosselli. That's another safety car there. And, oh, no, no, no. That's not good. And that is the second place in points driver there. Servino Rosselli out. What happened yeah, we, here? DJ called. It was three wide. And I don't think they got through. You just can't go three wide through there. And let's see. Uh... Ooh, I think yeah, it just, just clogged, came, clogged came in with the path of Fitzwater. Fitzy didn't do anything wrong there. I wouldn't think. And the driver this is going to benefit the most is Casperson or Darren Blake back there. I thought that was Casperson. We're going to go on board with Fitzwater. He of course has a hel he has a roof cam on his car. Wow, Actually, right a here. helmet cam. I'm sorry. He has the helmet cam. Or one of the helmet cams today. And just he just gets turned and just a big oh. hit for Fitzwater there. Let's go on board with Servino Rosselli as well. As Too Rosselli tight, there. We're gonna look for Servino Rosselli here on the order. Rosselli is in car number eight. Rosselli gets a good start here. Keep in mind, makes a move out to the inside here. Doesn't make the move all the way here. But then comes down low on Fitzwater. And we're back in safety car here and just... Ugh, hard hit. Big hit into that tire wall there down in turn two here at La Colina International. Well, let, well let's take a look and see what the running order is here uh, with Rosselli and um, a couple other cars out here. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, so the running order now is Darren Blake has a mechanical problem, so Blake actually will be out of the race as well. So right now it's Nanako, Hashimoto, Ozkin, Salomeo, Marriott, Curtis, Anderson, Ace Vito, Myatt, Freeze, Ormond, Ard, Turner, Casperson,
Halleck, Otts, um, Bouchard, Willington, Adventure, Anderson, Stark, Byrne, Mikola, and Tolfe. So there will be 24 cars getting the green again here. So we will see you in a little bit. Welcome back. It's been two laps under the safety car here. We got 24 cars left in the Spanish Grand Prix, and we've seen kind of a uh, chaotic bit here. Do you think they'll need to pit again in this race? I'm going to say yes, but there could be one or two outliers trying to get a stretch, and that could produce a wild card winner. And we kind of feel bad for Zachary Fitzwater. He was actually running really well, and he decided to try and do an undercut to get further up the grid, and, well... When the safety car happened, it put him further down the grid. And then he gets wrecked by Servino Rosselli, who is under investigation for an aggressive move there. So, that could be something to look out for. The second place in points driver uh, out of the race. And, well, this is kind of what we expected, is Renault to kind of fall down the order a little bit in points. But, maybe not the way they did. Much cleaner start, it looks like, here. As, uh... So, we've noticed that whoever started on the pole position, or presumed first spot on a restart, it hasn't gone well for them. So, what do you think's going to happen this time? I don't know. This this is interesting. There's one... Uh, here we go. Get the, I think the outside in this has to get a good run, but we'll see. I, I think the pole sitter holds on. I think Oscar, We'll see if a Hashimo can do. As we get here to the green... Here we go! Here we go. We got a. Oh boy, we already got some three wide back Benetton here. We already saw the three wide right back there. Three oh wide boy. doesn't really work around this track that easily. We're gonna keep our eye on it. A lot it. cleaner that time. Oh, a bit of contact. A lot cleaner. There. A lot cleaner that time. I might have saw a little bit of debris flying, but definitely a lot cleaner than the last restart we had. And Nanako continues to lead this race now over Hashimoto and Ozkin. That's the cleanest. That's probably the cleanest start we've had today here. As Whoa, look at this pack back here. Now, if anything's going to go wrong, it's going to be back here, it looks like. Oh, There's contact the between the two Ferraris up front, in front of us, as Ace Vito's going by Curtis. No, not Curtis really. Curtis got him off, again. Further up, there's some battling there as Hashimoto gets passed by Ozkin for second. Nanako is gone at the front of the field there. And Marriott gets... No, I think Hashimoto's it just lost really momentum. Dropping. And this was the spot where we had the incident earlier with um, Modeste Behringer. So Renault's far, so clean. Good start so far for the drivers here is Nanako. And actually, we got Jack Marriott in the top three now. I think Marriott, if he runs just there, he's going to come out of here with the points lead. And we've got the two Mercedes cars doing battle here. As we go down the Our hill. This is just a very, very difficult track, isn't it? Now. Good run by Sal Mayo. Yeah, this, like I said, this last section, at least on the brakes. Oh, notice how they got too close. Both uh, Marriott and Sal Mayo got too close there, and it backed them everybody up he there. He locked up the brakes a little bit in that corner, and that's the Ferraris, and it closed in. So far, it's been a great start by everybody. Evan Byrne, can you believe he's down in 23rd? Yeah, Byrne not making the best impression here on race three. Oh, somebody. That was stark slow through the corner there. Here we go. This is just a very chaotic race, isn't it? And I just... would certainly say so there. The Behringer effect, I guess you would say, once that first safety car came out. It's really brought the field up together and with... You know, that safety car bunching everybody up, track position is so key. You oh, have we had to a car take, take a couple of uh, wheels, must have gone off there. We're going to see who that was. Maybe. Go look back here in the replay. Uh, it might have been further off the field, yeah. We're going to find out who it was. Oh, it was like race a race leader. leader. It was Nanako oh. went off the road there. That's and a second. Marriott? Marriott actually gets Something by. Marriott gets by Ozkin there. And now it is a McLaren 1 2 at the front of the field with Marriott. Marriott's closing, though. Marriott's coming. Well, how much of that is just Nanako trying to clean off her tires, maybe? Oh, wow. Ooh. 
No, there is the there is something handling wrong with that McLaren up front. And who boy, if you're Casey Nanico here, you already had team principal uh, of McLaren there, Ron Dennis, already throwing down the hammer, saying sh that he is not impressed with Casey Nanico so far this season, and is already questioning to fire her. Uh, despite blaming her for blowing the motor at Pukekoe. I didn't really understand that one, but I digress as here comes Jack Marriott over a second that lap faster than Nanako here, and they are gone at the front of the field, aren't they? McLaren is just ditching everybody saying bye-bye, and Red Bull uh, trying to, uh, with, uh, is it Oskin, I believe? Yeah, Oskin trying to close the gap, but it's not going to work. I see this third, this ninth is going to be close, though. Is that... Benetton up there at top. That thing? is uh, Nathan Orman, Orman in 10th. That's great. Where Orman. Vince Freeze. Yeah, Freeze. I think Freeze was one of those cars that went off the road a little bit there when. Um, three wide. You got four three wide. Yeah. But right now, you've got Casey Nanico, Jack Marriott through the field here. Sam and Oskin, uh, Lucas Salameo, and Max Anderson right there. Just all trying their best to get through this field here. As, oh, Grayson Ace Vito and DJ Curtis, they have been hammering at each other. Yeah, under Mercedes, one of them. It's yeah. Really slipping. I think it's Hashimoto just really slipping. With that I think Mercedes. Hashimoto and Nanako could be going under some, uh, some handling issues here. Hashimoto's gone Hashimoto, slipping. oh boy. And DJ Curtis had to be really careful about that there. And actually, you've Kenny now Mine. got Kenny Mine and a Jordan going faster than a Mercedes. So I think that's telling something very keen there that there's something wrong with that uh, Mercedes car there. Did I, hear a car, did I see a car, hear a car start sliding a bit there? No, I didn't. I thought I did. The but, battle up front is heating up. Yeah, Marriott has caught his teammate Nanako now. And it's, Look how late in the brakes he gets. That is a very impressive lap here by Jack Marriott here. But can he make the move safely around his teammate, or will there be a team order call here? Will team or Principal Ron Dennis call team orders now and tell... Nanako to get out of the way of Marriott here. Let's go on board with Marriott. See, see where he's picking up time. So he's there, there. Really oh, good right there. There's where he's picking it up. I think he's picking yeah. up in this one section right here as we go up and then down here like a screw type action. Here we go. This is where he's gonna pick up time in the brakes. Watch this. Yep. And this is where Nanako went off the track earlier here. And see, oh my goodness. Nanako's car is not handling just that well there. Here comes Marriott on the outside of the corner here. This is a very aggressive move here. And Nanako lets him by very easily there. As Jack Marriott, the New Zealand winner, takes the lead here in Spain around this La Colina International Raceway. Fastest lap of the weekend at a 147.9 there by Jack Marriott in a race pace there. So Jack Marriott is sailing away right now in the lead of this race. Kenny, I think Nanako's got more issues than just handle. I think maybe a tires are shot. Surprised by that because of how dominant this race has been for Casey Nanako, the Japanese driver, as Luca Salameo now and um, that Sam and Oskin and Max Anderson are now reeling in. Nanako here, who is maybe just trying to hold on as much as she can here. Uh, right now, it is a McLaren 1-2, and I can't imagine that uh, Team Principal Ron Dennis would be very upset with um, a 1-2 around this track. The only thing now we have the question is the pit strategy. Will someone come in for tires? It's the only thing we have to question. Otherwise, McLaren will set for a 1-2 finish here. But can the Red Bulls pull off a creative strategy? Or can we see Sal Mayo splitting these guys pull up another strategy to try to... Keep in them. mind, also here, Sam and Oskin six-tenths of a second faster than the Nanico, Nanico car there. And, of course, well, Jack Marriott. Too. Jack Marriott's a second faster than everybody else, so... Oh, actually, no, not over Max Anderson. Anderson is quicker than the Jack Marriott car, so... Max Anderson's a car to watch in this race. DJ, what kind of strategies now are you looking at to possibly go forward now that there's only 24 cars left running in this race? Oh, we have a car in... Someone. That's Hashimoto! Uh-oh! What happened with Hashimoto? Is this going... Oh, just broke down. That's going to be a sector oh, yellow. That's a shame. 
Yeah, that's going to be it. That's going to hurt Sal Mayo as far as worry. Now Sal Mayo will be worried about reliability. It's our first reliability problem today. And another and race and another Mercedes car not scoring points. You know, that might Tough have actually break. explained why Hashimoto's pace is lacking after that safety car, and that's why it kept getting passed left and right by everybody else getting hounded like a bunch of dogs, basically. And look at the lead that Jack Marriott, Marriott has opened up Blitzel. over... Casey Nanico here as these other cars are actually reeling the two, well, not as much Marriott, but has reeling Nanico in here. Salameo is actually the third. Yes, yeah, Salameo got by um, Oskin Austin. there. We're going to take a look back to see how that move was made and where they did it here. Here it goes. It was just a very good dive. dive good move there through an S-bend there and Good move there by Lucas Salameo. Got to give Salameo all kinds of credit for making that move work. And set him up really well. Yeah, that was a good move there by Lucas Salameo there. As uh, we are now back onto the front stretch here. Salameo now a 148. Now, that was a team order move, I think, there. Because now Nanako is now just as fast as Marriott. I think... Could McLaren have orchestrated that to get their lead driver in the lead of the race? That that's an interesting call from McLaren. That's going to really set a precedent. A precedent, excuse me, precedent. And what happens with the team going forward as far as team friction? That could be interesting. Let me keep an eye on that. Let's yeah, because right. it looks like Marriott now is definitely the lead driver here, and this is one of the reasons why Kenny Myatt left the McLaren team is he didn't want anything to do with. Um, with these uh, inter-team order battles here, Jordan, of course, only uses them in very select situations, and quite frankly, Myatt, by a mile, is the lead driver, if you consider where his teammate is running. Down here in 20th. So, Kenny, I, I think you, while you went to that watch, I think uh, one of the Mercedes has just left the Red Bull, I think. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, Mercedes is gone from the Red Bull. That would be Salameo is yep. now pulling on Ozkin and Anderson here. Um, I'm kind of surprised that the Red Bulls are not performing better than they are as down the field they go. I think Salameo can challenge Nanico too, so we'll have to watch that battle for a second. He's definitely closing in, slowly but surely. And Salameo... Uh, but is it going to be enough here? I mean, Nanico just did a 149.8. Uh, and actually, the why? Nope. You gotta give Halleck, or I'm sorry, not Halleck. Um, Marriott is eight tenths of a second faster than everybody else on the track Marriott's right now. Gone. Ooh, Renault, I think is down pit lane. I think I just oh. saw that. Yeah, Jesse Turner. Is this a scheduled stop? Or did he break down? Let's see. Or did he break? Or was there an accident that we missed? Oh, wow. Oh, that's oh, a safety whoa. car. That's a safety car. That's yep. a definite safety car there. What even happened? Uh, Just lost control point. of the I car. Got, I think something broke. Something oh, broke on that car, and that's Jesse Turner flipping oh, out of the track. And, oh, boy, we've got another safety car here. This changes everything. Definitely changes everything here. Let's take a look and see again. I don't again. know why he delayed it so long for the safety car. Just oh my god, he went just way it. wide. That was a dangerous angle too on the hit. Ooh, almost so hit many nasty So many nasty hits are on this track. Ooh. I think he just understeer. Yeah, head first that understeer. That, that, yeah. You see it slide. Yeah, understeer and then he just tried to overcorrect it, boom, and he just takes a just couple a barrel rolls. Horrible then, oh angle. my god. And this is very scary here because that head got really close to this guardrail here. Luckily I think it just like missed the it. His head just barely missed that guardrail there. That could have been really bad for Jesse Turner there. We're going to go on board. I don't know how long this camera's going to last here. The reno of Jesse Turner. And we're going to set the watch, safety watch car record. Yeah, he. I think he just, he just lost and he tried Understood. to overcorrect. Yeah. Very, oh. very scary incident here. Nearly hits that fence. That was scary. That was scary stuff. Very... He just didn't put enough wheel into it. It just didn't look like his wheel movement was as good. In yeah. The corner. So with that being said, we are under another safety car here in La Colina International Raceway. 
Your running order, Jesse Turner is out of the race, as is Kitsune Hashimoto, so we're down to 22 cars now. Jack Marriott leads a McLaren 1-2 with Casey Nanico, Luca Salameo, Sam and Oskin, Max Anderson, Grayson Ace Vito, DJ Curtis, Kenny Myatt, Nathan Orman, Sean Ard, Vince Fries, Jack Halleck, Frodemar Otz, Daniel Bouchard, Daniel Adventure, um, Joachim Kasperson, Pat Mikola, Julius Anderson, Evan Byrne, Archie Willington, Tolfe, and Stark in that order. So, oh boy, this race is going to get really heated as it keeps going here, isn't it? Oh yeah, most certainly. I think it's just going to get more and more as the laps wind down and with so little to go. Oh man, this we race is catastrophic results, horror and tragically. Okay, I don't know what's going to happen with the strategy. This is just messed with the entire strategy. Do, do we see somebody just stretch it? I, this is going to be interesting. I think there, there's no one that's going to need to pit. Not a person's yeah. going to need to pit. I think they should flag. all be good by now after this one. Yeah, we're, we're, we're this is a straight shootout. Here we go. Yep, we'll see it when we get back. Well, here we go. Welcome back to the Spanish Grand Prix. We're going to have seven to go on this restart here. I'm guessing mass pandemonium on this restart. Yeah, seven to go. It's it's time to go. It's go time. We got the McLarens up front. We got the Ferraris in line. We got uh, we got a Red Bull. We got a uh, Mercedes. We got Kenny Mai in the top ten. The Benettons rounding out the top ten. Wild stuff. And will we see three wild like we have seen the previous two starts? We'll see. DJ, what do you got to say? I would say we could see someone get really aggressive like we have in these previous safety cars, like three wide action specifically. Freeze pointed that out as well. But the McLarens have just been the class of the field here. They've been an unstoppable force today. This is just a very interesting race here. We've seen three incidents, all three involving a car flipping. So this track is a very hard hitting track to say the least. But any up any update on Turner's medical condition? Are we still on Turner? Might be Turner is going. I think he was communicating with officials. We don't have any word on Behringer yet, and both the two in the second safety car got out all right. But um, Turner is being taken to a local medical center just for some checkups, we believe, and uh, we do think he could he should be all right. But it's just for um, just for some preliminary stuff there. No word on Behringer yet, so we're still very concerned about Modest Behringer. We'll hear more in the post-race later, but here we go as we enter the final sections here. This is going to be the wild shootout. Okay, gonna... do you think now that the Team Orders game has been already played by McLaren, do you think Nanako is going to play those games for the remaining bit of this race? No way. I, I, no. I, the r race wins on the line. It's time to go. Throw those Team Orders out the window. Crunch time. Yep. I don't know if necessarily the team principal over at McLaren is going to like that too much, but we're coming through the final corner here. I'm a little nervous, aren't you? Yeah, as we get to oh, the yeah. hump here, up the hill we go. And here we go, green flag. Good start by Marriott there. Nanako did not get going. Got three wide in the back. Oh, was there three wide? Yes, there is. It looks Williams. like Vince Freeze is out there looking three wide. So far, it looks like a good clean zone. Oh, crash! Oh, no. Freeze is around! Go. And luckily, it was not a flip. I think they're going to be able to push that car away there for Vince Freeze. And actually, Drop Nanako forward. drops to fourth. Bad day for Williams there in that corner specifically. As it is now Marriott, Salomeo, and Anderson. Oskin and uh, Nanako fell way back there. And we're going to see what happened with Vince Freeze here quick. Um, DJ, what do you think happened here? Just three wide action. Way, a bit too aggressive, but you know what? The lap's tying down. He just yeah, he just cut down on the Toyota there. Just took himself out. Oh, hard hit. That was a harder hit. But luckily, Vince Freeze was able to climb out of his car. Oh, we got another car down there. That's Sean Ard. Oh, oh, he was doing so good, too. And this is just... He, he gets into his teammate. teammate. Oh. And around he goes into the wall oh. there. That's going to be a That's sector horrible. yellow, too, but I think they're able to get that car away as well. So here we go. This has just been a crazy race. It's now they're catching Halle, or they're catching Marriott in the lead. So now you've got Salomeo closing in. So two cars out. They do get those cars. We are green flag all the way around this track now. 
as they've worked on them there that's the benefit to this track is if there is a smaller incident they can clean it up very quickly here and here we go max anderson oh, is a wide. really Salve. good corner there Salve is wide. it's gonna help marriott he's gonna love this behind him marriott is trying to pull away as quickly as he can around this track through the field now down the order here anybody get a really good start looks like casperson's trying to make a move on bouchard here i think the jaguar also one finally of the evan burn burns getting up through the order there as well yes we got a jaguar frodomar ots in the points right now Alec might try to get or Bouchard are trying to sneak it away up there. Oh, it looks like Ooh, Benetton went right wide. Benetton had a really bad Orman run there of Ormond. Cannot capitalize. And this Ots is there. No, I think one of the Oh look at the oh, two uh, Haas cars going duking it out there. Haas is not in the points and they're second in the standings. And of course, Reno, the points leaders in constructor standings, are right now out. So we could have the top two. Oh, we had a car going wide, I believe. We have some us what was oh, that wise. from oh we got somebody off hold on we're gonna see where that came from i don't know where it came from because there's no gravel over there it uh, looks like might have accumulated from somewhere it's up ahead it's up ahead yeah there was some gravel somewhere over there we're going to take the another the look. Time. It is a windy day, so they must have just thrown some... Let's see. Somebody here. went wide somewhere, but apparently we can't find it where it was, so... I think fans might have had a little bit too much fun down there. That might be why. <laughs> yeah, these Spanish fans, they're very, very uh, lively bunch there, as Jack Marriott is under threat by Lucas Salameo. We don't have long left in this race, and this is coming down to the wire here. <laughs> Coming to five to go. Here we got Lucas Salomeo hunting Marriott into the first S's here. Oh, we do have oh, a car sorry. going off the track somewhere. I have no idea what's going on with the behind. As he's, oh, that was Tolfe going off. That could have been where fine. the smoke was, yeah. Just a little bit of sand in the tires now. Just That's overall. Oh, we have another car going wide. Is that... Somebody went wide down and turn two again here oh boy that is a scary corner down there oh somebody got into the wall one of the toyotas did that adventure that would be daniel adventure. adventure going way wide way gets into the oh, wall a little air a little air too a little air time oh nearly in the very Mikula. close with Mikola there that's the second of voice for me oh and boy Look how crammed man those crammed fans are going crazy there. down there oh orbit squeezing Look at the Toyota right behind them, though. Oh, contact! Oh, oh, oh. In the ground. Oh, my goodness! The Haas right there. This race has gone off the walls, my goodness. And the S lead is, uh... Somehow, Marriott's pulling away! I think Sal may have ran wide. There's no way Marriott can... Oh, boy. That might have been some of the dirt that came up there with Sal Mayo running wide there. And you've got Anderson all over the back of him here. Nanako's coming. So is, uh, Oskin. This is a... It's battle for a second. This I think that Mercedes right just isn't good in this short trim, really, compared to that McLaren. Just the McLaren's tires are just so well up to temperature. How have we not had a bigger wreck so far in this stint of the race? Is this is? Oh, here oh. goes, here goes Nanica on the inside of Anderson there. But oh, what yeah, a run kind of... out of the corner there by Anderson. Great run by Anderson. That's gonna oh. What? And Salomeo is quicker, I think, overall than Marriott. If it wasn't for Salomeo going off the oh, Marriott's oh, off. Marriott's, Marriott's off the track. Oh, look Salomeo. at the time he's gonna gain. And here the comes time. Salomeo flying around great. the outside. Goes uh -oh. wide, but let's see if he gets the run off. And he does. Salomeo, oh, Lucas Salomeo takes the lead, and there goes Max Anderson in second. Can Anderson have the line, though? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, going to clear. Oh, and, my uh, goodness. There's Austin back there, so Nanako's able to hold on to fourth, but the Red Bull is just hot on their heels. What a race this has been. Kay. And it's now incredible. here comes the two. We got another car going off somewhere. Is that... I think they're just finding it's just a car that just went off. Jaguar's going around the Jordan. It must have been Nathan 
Wormit, how slow he is out there. And you've got Anderson, Anderson now catching Salomeo. This isn't over yet. I think this is going to be between Red Bull and Mercedes. Uh, I'm not even counting to... the McLarens out yet either. I think the draft is just going to play a big role. Who doesn't make a mistake will win this race. It's like... And we've seen a lot of mistakes Ooh, so far McLaren's in this race. A little bit wide in that corner back McLaren's there. McLaren side by side. All right, so here comes Jack Marriott now, trying to hold off his teammate Casey Nanico. Marriott and still got time. It all comes down to mistakes now. Will either of these two leaders make a mistake? As Salomeo, this is the first non-McLaren to lead a lap in this entire race, as Lucas Salomeo. We'll lead the lap here, but Max Anderson but that Red Bull's coming. is that Red right coming. there. And here we go, turn by, one. And oh boy! And now Nanako is quicker than his t than her teammate Marriott here. So I think could, that excursion with oh, the uh, gravel trip might have hurt hurt that McLaren. Here comes Oskin. Oskin, Oskin on the inside of. Can he get him? Yep. No, nope. not yet. Got a good run oh. there. She can. Uh, can he get her? See what he got. Also, a little further back. I got to I gotta cut back here quick. There's some really close battling back here with one of the Ferraris. Oh, one of the Ferraris is in the wall. Oh, Big oh, wreck. Oh, Who is that? I, that would be I mean, DJ Curtis. Curtis there. That's got to be a red flag. Or that's got to be a safety car again. They're going to throw VSC for now. Got to get that replay, but yeah, that was a bad one. They are going to try and keep it green here. As, oh, Nathan Ormond. Very Ormond slow on issues. track. Was Ormond the one that hit him? No, I think Ormond's got mechanical issue. Driver of the one car, DJ Curtis, the reigning champion, takes a big oh hit there. God. There was something, I think, preceding. The Jordan was having an issue over there, That's too. That's Kenny Myatt had an issue. He had a mechanical problem, and then, oh. Oh, wow. Someone. That was uh, Marriott going off there. I a missed A lot of things that. going on. Oh, my gosh. Oh, what a Holy shot. Holy smokes. Terrible wreck. Terrible wreck for DJ Kurt. Terrible. And that was Frodomar Otz getting into him there. I think something there. was wrong oh, with the Ferrari God. because the Jaguar is coming in so hot. Yeah. Well, we know there's something wrong with the... With the Jordan. Jordan. Jordan's got there's issues. So many things going on. Then those things fast well, They are lot. green. They did get that car far enough off the track where they can keep racing here. We've got two to go. You've got Salomeo and Anderson. Third is Oskin, fourth is Nanako, fifth is Marriott, because in all that ma matter there, Nanako gets by Marriott. So this race just went oh. completely haywire for McLaren. Seventh for Ott, eighth for Casperson, ninth for Bouchard, tenth for Halleck, and the big loser once again is going to be Jordan is not going to score points again today because Kenny Myatt has now... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Bird went off. There's a problem with the 23 car of Kenny Myatt there. Uh, I don't see Ace Vito, so Ferrari's And now we got alert. Stark coming in as well. Stark has a problem. This race has gone crazy. Something happened further up. Oh, Stark went oh, around. Yeah, oh. he just Stark, went off. Stark just lost it down there. and <sighs> Similar to Turner, but just less impact, yeah. Oh, Somehow good Stark kept that going. And now we've got a battle at the front of the field with Anderson versus Salomeo. Salomeo leads in the Mercedes. Mercedes has not scored a point yet this race, and his teammate has fallen out. I mean, what can you say so far about this race towards the end here is Jordan once again. Oh, Willington's got a problem now. What happened not with Archie thing. Willington? Oh, no, oh, that's oh, Evan Bird. Oh, that might be a oh. Evan Bird. He just took him out. Oh, uh, Evan Bird. You, you've got how many penalty points? Yeah, Bird just Oh, yeah, he just drove it in way too oh, hard. The Force yeah. Indian gave him plenty of space, too. That's tough break with Force Indian. They were doing so well, too. I don't know about that by Bird. And the lead's heating up here. As we oh, boy, it's the last Ooh. lap now. Last lap. We've got it really close here between Anderson and Salomeo. It's a matter of if Anderson happens, can put the pressure on Salomeo to see if that Mercedes makes a mistake. This right, is all on Anderson now. 
Oskins in a distance third. I think this this might be is we'll see. critical now. So far, everybody's currently just trying to... S oh, we've got... Cur oh, that's Curtis and our Ermin. I'm sorry, we already know that. I thought that was <laughs> Ace Vito there for a minute. Crazy race, I understand it, boys. Here we go into the final grandstand section coming up. And look how much faster the Red yeah, Bull Red is Bull. through that corner complex there. There's not many turns left on this track for them to make that the move. Red Bull's coming. Right on the bumper. Well, that, the Red Bull's got to get it right that, here. He's got to get the run of the life right here. And he is coming, but I don't know if he's got the time to do it. This is the grandstand this section, the grandstand section now. Stream on that Mercedes there if he wants to have a good shot because he's right there. He is there. Final couple of corners here. Here he comes. Oh, he Down low. Oh. Down low. Oh, he's not going to oh, get it. Salomeo chops him. What a move by what a great car placement. And Salomeo. right there, I think great they defending. did it. Salomeo with the best defense I've seen in a while. He cut the air right off as we end the final first. corner. Oh, he's still coming oh. though. It's, I That's think, going to come to Salomeo. Lucas Salomeo, the Brazilian, comes off the final corner to win what is quite possibly the most chaotic Formula Omega race any of us have ever seen. <laughs> Lucas Salomeo, in a race that was dominated by McLaren of Casey Nanico, Jack Marriott was doing 155s at the end of that there with problems. Ace Vito did nothing. Casperson was the fastest car in the set whole end of the race there. We got cars breaking down all over the place. I don't even know what the top 10 looks like. And Ace Vito now after the yellow has a problem. Never after right. the car, after the checker there, so. Whoo, boy. Somebody's off. Spanish fans are going nuts. This is what, what are you gonna, What are you going to call about this race? What are you going to say so far for this one? What can't this you say? You, we had we had a, we had everything in this race. I mean, we had incidents, we had wrecks, flips, an incredible finish, and possibly well, two two bonehead moves, of course, by Burn. We don't know what it's going to be with him, and possibly the best defense I've ever seen of a driver, Sal Mayo. <laughs> and we go back to that replay. He just cut off Oscar at the right point. Man, yeah, let's go back and take a look at that there, because that was Oscar had him. Uh, or not Oskin, that's Anderson, that sorry. Anderson, that Anderson, Anderson had him crazy. right in this I think corner. I was a bit too optimistic, though, of a move, though. I think if Anderson had waited just maybe a little bit, because that's not really the best area to pass. Oh, yeah. He cut it's off just so tight in there, you know, with the great deep of some. I say if he waited just a little bit more, like around this area, this would have been a great opportunity. But even so, you got to give Anderson some credit for trying to make a move on and that last lap. Because it was a great flexing. point, DJ, because look at this. He makes up so much time in those <laughs> corners. You should have just waited one more, you know, even one more turn. He would have had the run to the line. Yeah, so that... Yeah. Lucas Salome, you got to give him credit. That was a very... That was a, that was a very good move there. As they all come down to Park Ferme here. What a race. What a Brazilian... Third, race actually, is, actually, it's a double podium for Red Bull for here. Red Bull. Great job for them, double would point. Would you have oh, ever thought... Rock the way up. Would you have ever thought that none of the McLarens would have gotten on the... Oh, Marriott's breaking down! It's lucky he came after the race and not during. I think Marriott had the same problem as Hashimoto. I have a feeling. Would Would you have predicted Mercedes that none of the Mer McLarens would have gotten on the podium in this race? Not after the first, sa not after the first uh, safety car. I thought they had... Not that. after, like, the fourth safety car, I would have thought that. They were yeah. such the class, they were the class of the field throughout, and then just that, you know, they're going to be kicking themselves after this one, because that huge mistake by Marriott, that's going to be a big highlight for them losing this race, and they're probably going to have to really just try and pick themselves up for the next upcoming rounds, because that was easily their race to lose. Yes, it the was. Only, the only good thing for Merce uh, McLaren, I guess, is they do get the double points in Risno and Haas were nowhere to be found, so that's their only bright side of the weekend but as dj said yeah they had that race control just a disappointing weekend overall let's go to the podium celebrations for the brazilian and german anthems <laughs>
right, welcome to the points running here. Jack Marriott has a one-point gap over Servino Rosselli, who crashed out in um, this race. Sam at Ozkin on 30 points there. That's pretty good for Ozkin. And then DJ Curtis with 26 there. Uh, Salomeo on 25 with his win today. With a door well, That's Daniel Bouchard, the Canadian, in 6th. Blake in 7th after not finishing. Um, uh, that would be Max Anderson in 8th with 18 points tied with Blake for that matter. Uh, ninth is Halleck, 10th is Casperson, 11th for Stark, Nanico 12th, Turner 13th, 14th for Ard, 15th for Ace Vito. I'm pretty sure Ferrari can't be too happy with Ace Vito being in 15th in points after three races. 16th for Freeze, 17th for Adventure, 18th for Anderson, 19th for Otz, the last card to score, last driver to score points. Hashimoto still doesn't have a point. Um... Fitzwater on zero, Burn on zero. Fitzwater also having zero is kind of sad. Burn on zero, Myatt on zero. Myatt arguably should. Um, Ormond on zero, Mikola on zero, Willington on zero, Berenger, hope he uh, is all right, on zero, Tanker on zero, Ebner on zero, Tolfe on zero, and Scott Roush on zero. Word of advice, DJ Curtis was taken to a local medical center. We believe he will be all right. And we are now going to look at the constructor standings. And right now, you can see how competitive that is with McLaren on 49, Red Bull on 48, with Renault on 46, with Haas on 35, Ferrari on 34, Sauber on 32, Mercedes on 25, with Minardi on 12, Benetton on 8th, 6 for Williams, 6 for Toyota, 2 for Jaguar, and then the three teams with 0, Force India, Jordan, and Arrows. So, on the post-race show, driver standings-wise, who surprises you where they are in points right now? Fitzy and Hashimo on the bottom end, right? I mean, those guys, 0 points, 3 rounds in. They got to pick it up. But, I mean, even though Rosselli didn't have a good day, to still be second one point behind after three rounds, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, two second-place finishes really got Rosselli high up the order there. Um, DJ, who's kind of is a driver that you are impressed with right now, other than, like, let's say, Servino Rosselli? Daniel Bouchard. Daniel Bouchard. Haas- in the Haas He's running six. very high in points there. You look at his points tally. Very consistent. Very good weekend down in New Zealand. Got some points in Spain when it counted the most. And he's outperforming his teammate of Jack Halleck. So, I mean, Daniel Bouchard might not be able to win this championship. But you never know as the season really winds down. But he's doing fantastic right now. Um, For me right now, I've got to give a little bit of a shout out to... Um, we're looking at Sam at Oskin, very consistent. Granted, New Zealand didn't turn out well for him, but two third-place finishes. Great to see Oskin that high up the order and with 30 points. And when you're coming down to it, it's a very important uh, showdown here with Jack Marriott at the top of the board here. I think everybody predicted Marriott would be one of the fastest drivers this season. But, um, yeah, Jack, Jack Marriott, one thing I will say about his pace, you know, I, we know he won last week at Pico and he got a top five here. If he keeps this up, especially we, as we get into the European round, he could be one of the European threats because this is where the championship is going to be decided as far as points. And you're going to look back and be like, oh, man, we needed more points. That's where the constructors will come into play, too, as we, get, uh, as we uh, talk about that in the next segment. Speaking of that, let's go over to the constructor standings. And we already kind of went through this here, but I, I, let me start off. There is no reason why Jordan should be that low right now. And I honestly, Myatt's had a lot of bad luck. Every race he's had a mechanical problem. Evan Byrne, single-handedly in every race, has done something stupid, I think. Every weekend he's done something stupid. Why is Evan Byrne even in the car at this rate? Evan Byrne, I, I'm sorry. After what he did today, especially when Behringer's unknown stats and threw a force India team that needed points, uh, he might be on the docket for not only a penalty points, but a super license revoke that I'll have to watch in the coming weeks. Well, he's darn close to a point suspension. If he gets four more points, he gets a suspension. So if that was deemed a four-point incident, he will not be starting the Italian Grand Prix next week. So... Jordan might need to start looking for a new driver to fill in for Evan Byrne then. And there's plenty of talent out there. I mean, 
in reality, I mean, Ivan Stark, for example, I mean, he single-handedly got Minardi to eighth in points right now. And then Minardi can always bring back Sebastian Ebner. Or there's a driver that doesn't have a ride this year, Tristan Wilhoit, the Texan driver, looking to possibly get a ride in this, ser in this series. And Jordan could be a good place with him. He, of course, at one time was a McLaren teammate to Kenny Myatt. And uh, before Jack Marriott showed up, of course, Will Hoyt went sports car racing for a little bit. Or stock car racing, my hey. bad. So, hey, Will Hoyt DJ could be a big factor there, too. DJ, who are you surprised at? Or maybe as somebody that, to watch as the season keeps going. Um, I mean, I would still like to keep an eye on Ferrari and Mercedes. These are Ferrari's still kind of struggling. I think they're just going through their little early season slump. Despite the win at Australia, they didn't really have the car to really win. Curtis just was lucky to survive and just adapt to the attrition going on. Um, Mercedes, they are really a team to look out for. They really pick up the act, just like they did with Salomeo. They could really climb their way back up in this championship fight in terms of constructors and even drivers if things go in the right way. We know that Hashimoto is going to be under a lot of immense pressure just because of having no points in that Mercedes compared to Salomeo's win. Now we know that, you know, Salomeo getting his first points of the season, you know, it's now put the pressure on Hashimoto to see if he can perform in that Mercedes car. It's such a high caliber Formula 1 car, too. Williams is another team. They're having also a disappointing first start of the season. Really, the first three races have been disaster for them. Zachary Fitzwater could have won the round of Australia for the hometown, but or the home crowd. And, well, you know how that went. And, well, with some very lackluster races for the Williams team, they really also have to pick it up. But they, they've been a fast team, but they just haven't had the results to really show it. I guess Banaton too, right? They're, they've got the pace. They're just not getting the finishes, but they're definitely someone that's kind of shocking as far as mid-race pace. They, they on average, have the best mid-race pace, I would say, of the teams we thought that were going to be way in the back. So I think Banaton, even Minardi, thanks to Ivan Stark's performances, watch out for those guys to possibly climb the top eight in points to constructors, which would be a win for those kind of teams. And see for me the big thing here is can force india break through because force india we're guessing pretty sure they're not going to have behringer in their car next week who's force india going to put in their car next week i mean there's going to be drivers looking for there's going to be a lot of stuff going on here going forward and that's going to be a big factor coming up here is who's going to be in what car when we get to italy and um yeah it's just going to be a very interesting weekend or week in between Spain and Italy because we've had a chaotic, chaotic race here with the way that the track has been, with the track conditions, with water on it. And a lot of times we thought the water was going to clear out, and it kind of didn't. That's why it was a little bit of a cra crazy race there. But uh, just overall, very chaotic race. Any final thoughts, Vince? We've got about a minute 45 left. Yeah, I got to say, we, we thought we now, restore, order was restored as far as top teams, but the crazy racing is continuing at that first safety car. That race was nuts. Like I said, watch out for the midfield, and we'll see what happens with Burn, driver updates, and let's see what happens uh, in Forza Ferrari land next week in Italy. DJ, you got any final sayings or f any final thoughts? Yeah, pressure is right. Pressure is rising up for a lot of drivers that have yet to score points. Some teams are under pressure already for not performing up to their expectations, and some might have to tone it down, maybe be, uh, follow a more realistic uh, outlook on how they'll approach the rounds. But the matter at hand is just the midfield, as Freeze pointed out, that's going to be really the main focus as well as driver updates, especially with Vern. And we'll see what those slides could have in store for even the upcoming drivers. It was a chaotic Spanish Grand Prix race. We didn't expect it to be chaotic. We expected it to be kind of formulaic, but it certainly wasn't. And with that being said, I will. we will be signing off here, and we will see you for the Italian Grand Prix next weekend.